Now AVI is next. Remember this one uh, used to be called Anglovol Industries, but after some uh, reorganization of the global group, AVI has been branded and trading under that brand name for a while. Simon Crutchley at the helm done a tremendous job over the last decade. The portfolio is the old T.W. Beckett's hot and cold beverages business, coffees, teas. It has lots of sweets and savory snacks in there. There's like Willard's crisps. It's got out of home, which means things like House of Coffees and Syro, which supplies those sorts of things into corporate and hospitals and all that sort of thing. But remember this one made a change about six or seven years ago where it started expanded into the luxury goods market with the acquisition of the AD Spitz business. So it has in fact brands like Carvella and other Kurt Geiger shoes and so on. You'll find their stores in the super end of the malls. So that move was originally viewed with some suspicion, but it has really paid off and the company is much more balanced now. Market capitalization 32.6 billion rand. Price to earnings ratio of 20.2, dividend yield 3.95%. Very steady performer, very steady earnings hikes on a regular basis. It does, if you just look at the uh, chart. I mean, let's look at the chart while we talk. So that's a handsome looking picture. Yeah, I mean, if you invested, uh, I think you've done really, really well. Mm. Um, I this think was the one to be in. Yes, um, you would think that you'd want to go with your, your pioneers um, or with Tiger Brands. Uh, but this is an extremely well-run business. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you often hear about how well the management team has done. Uh, and I think one thing we forgot to mention is the INJ brand. Yes. Uh, that's been under quite a bit of pressure. So that's fishing. If people aren't, of course, familiar, that's a Cape-based operation. Although traditionally it was a bit volatile, but in recent times does seem to have made a more positive contribution. Yes, and I think uh, going forward, uh, the prospects are that they will contribute uh, far more uh, to the bottom line. Why are you so positive about the fish? Just because pricing is good, the demand is solid? Yeah. What's been going on with the fleet? Have they been finding They've the been fish? catching quite a bit. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> that's that's a very cyclical from business. Town. Hey, uh, but I'm sure they've got all the new mod cons on the new trawlers that that's make it. sure you can find the fish. Yeah, and it's off a very low base. Um, mm. So I do think that they could contribute uh, further. Uh, but overall, uh, once again, a wide variety of brands. Uh, they're in the beverages. The one thing I don't like um, is uh, that retail exposure that they have. Why don't you like that? Because those stores appear to do very well. Jimmy Choo's, Green Cross, all of the shoe brands, the ones I mentioned earlier as well? Well, given this environment, I mean, it is a large discretionary spend. Yeah. Um, so it's quite interesting to note, uh, we're not seeing aggressive revenue growth. Um, but if you dig into those numbers, you'll see that lay buys uh, increased by, by 45% for spits. Okay. Um, so I'm just worried about uh, the quality of consumer. Um, and at this stage, I don't want to be too exposed to discretionary. So mm. I like the other part of the portfolio. I'm just a little bit concerned about the Speaking discretionary. Speaking about the other part of the portfolio, where some of them, like Tiger, have this big footprint in maize, milling, and that sort of thing. I mean, AVI has always been a little bit higher up the value chain. So coffees, for example, Frisco, Coffee House, mm -hmm. you know, Tyro, all of that stuff really is sort of a bit more premium branded stuff where the margins are higher. And of course, people do trade down sometimes, but they are very strong and solid performers in the tea area, Five Roses, Creamers, Ellis Brown, all that yeah. stuff. I mean, they remain very firm and strong favorites in the restaurant, not restaurant, supermarket aisles when people are shoveling down. That's it. High margins in those businesses as mm. compared uh, to a Tiger Brands or Pioneer uh, with uh, really relying on uh, that bread business. But the problem, of course, is, as you say, they're very competitive space as well. So sure. often in the supermarket context, you'll find that, you know, someone is coming to take on uh, the established brand with something that looks the same and even has the same sort of name, but which is priced a little cheaper. OK, so your concern is not hot on account of specifically the luxury goods side of the business. That's it, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to go hot anyway. I'm feeling positive <laughs> and generous today.